Uh, full committee, Darius. It's six o'clock. If you want to start streaming, and we're streaming, recording, and ready to launch here. We're good to go. Uh, <clears throat> so I'll call the meeting to order at 6:01 p.m. of the Deerfield Elementary School Committee. Uh, January 6, 2021. Seems a little strange to say that, but um, Happy New Year, everyone. I do want to note that this meeting is a virtual meeting and is being live streamed and recorded so that the uh, people are aware of that, that are, are tuning in. So um, the first item on the agenda is the review and approval of minutes of December 8, 2020. We make a motion to approve those minutes. Second the motion. Is that Gary? Yeah. Okay. Any comments or notes? If not, I will take a roll call vote. Ken Cutterback, yes. David Sharp? Yes. Uh, Carrie Etchells? Yes. Mary Raymond? Yes. Trevor McDaniel? Yes. Very good, thank you. Financial statement, sign the <clears throat> general report. It's funny to say sign the warrants when you're not actually <laughs> signing them right now, right? right. Um, so you did sign electronically 10 warrants since we last met, totaling $95,398.22. Thank you for doing that electronically, we appreciate it. Um, I also shared the general fund and school choice expense reports with you electronically. I'm happy to take questions if you have them. There's no financial concerns to report. Um, we're continuing to monitor any possible savings or overages that we might have. Um, the school's looking to be in really good shape right now because of some work that Tina and the staff have done to um, not refill some positions that were vacant. So we're in a good spot there, but I'm willing to take questions if you have them. Uh, a couple of questions. I know that I've signed some warrants at town for um, for some COVID relief funds that came back um, you, to the school. And, and I was just trying to figure out if you had any other more bills coming or I think we approved like 181 and I forget how much you're close to that, but not quite all of that. Yeah, so I think we have about another 60,000 that's coming still. So we've um, been reimbursed for about 12,000. So that has gone back into the original expense account, which is mostly school choice. Some of it was general fund, but mostly school choice. And right. then the town has paid about 95,000 directly to vendors for us. Yeah. And then we're still waiting for some technology. So I did let Casey and Brenda Hill know that those invoices will be coming to them as soon as we get the products. I think that's around 60,000. Okay, and that'll keep us under that 181 or whatever. Okay, great, that's perfect, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Any questions about the expense re reports? Um, no, okay. Um, I didn't really see anything unusual, so. Okay. Well, thank you as always for very efficient reporting. Great. Um, the last thing I wanted to comment on here is just to give you the school lunch update. So currently, because we did move wages over to the general fund, um, we are seeing a positive net income year to date of just shy of $3,000. And we did have a start of year balance of 25,000. So the current balance in the school lunch revolving account is right around 28,000. Very good, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, what kind of income are we getting? So, I mean, I guess I guess we still have some lunches, right, when we're in school, but no, right? No, so none of the revenue is coming in from the school directly. It's coming in from state and federal reimbursements. I right? got you. Okay. So basically, all students right now are on sort of a free and reduced lunch yeah. kind of program. So the reimbursement is similar to free and reduced lunch wages or, or reimbursement. Yeah. Right. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Shelley. Any other questions or comments? Uh, we are at public comment. I do have um, two public comments this evening. Um, the first one is from Richie Allum. 
and he has written to us before. His, uh, this is an email forwarded message. The subject is thank you. To the members of the Deerfield School Committee, I'm writing to express my gratitude for all the work you have done, <clears throat> that you have done to make this very, uh, I printed it, that was a mistake. <laughs> let me back up a step. <laughs> let, me, let me pull it up real quick, sorry. No, take it down. Um, yeah, Ken, you did send it to us all today, or somebody did. Oh, you did get a copy of it? Well, I yeah. still need to read it into the record, you, so my you do? apologies. Okay. Say, um, just stick it in the record. Well, David, it's a thank you note. Can we hear it in the record, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, my gosh. One more second here. My apologies. <clears throat> Let's try this again. I'm writing to, again, to express my gratitude for all the work that you have done to make this very challenging year happen for our school and our community. It has been a huge struggle, and I hope you know how much, how appreciated you are. Furthermore, I'm also so very thankful for the commitment to anti-racism, both in the curriculum and in the district as a whole. This is ongoing work, and there are no quick fixes. I am very hopeful that we may be able to make some lasting changes in our community to make it a more equitable and welcoming space. I do hope that we can continue to make anti-racism a priority in our schools and our lives. I also want you all to know that you are not alone in this work. There are many community members who are very invested in this work and are willing to help. It truly takes a village. I hope all of you can find peace in your lives amid the difficulties of growing these young minds. With peace and respect, Richie Allen, parent and community member. Uh, thank you, Mr. Allen, for that very kind note. Uh, the second uh, piece of public comment that I received was from the <clears throat> Frontier Regional and Union 38 Special Education Parent Advisory Council, dated January 6, 2021. Uh, also known as the FRSU 38 CPAC. The FRSU 38 CPAC would like to thank the members of this committee for their ongoing support of special education students. We hope that you will continue to give special education and other vulnerable learners the option to access in-person instruction, regardless of what model is used for the rest of the school community. So uh, thank you also to the CPAC committee for their kind words and thoughts, and um, we will continue to work to that end. So um, that is the public comment for this evening. Do we have an <clears throat> anti-racism, uh, the next would be unfinished business, anti-racism and equity committee update? Do we have yeah, one? So the, yeah, the anti-racism group has not, um, they kind of feel like they just did a report. We had about six days of school before we broke. So they, they didn't have any movement on, on the stuff they're working on. So yeah. they asked if we just put on pause for one month and they'll be back next month to give us an update on their, their work following the break. So yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, COVID-19 update. Um, again, another really brief one because we're in the, um, you know, we had a meeting last week. Um, and basically where we're at now, just kind of give an update for those who maybe didn't tune into that meeting. But um, right now, the Board of Health, with the in conversation with the Frontier School Committee, um, uh, decided to come to delay opening until the 11th. They're going to be looking at the numbers. Um, I basically I called the chair, um, uh, called Carolyn, and basically going to have a conversation with her on Thursday. When those numbers come out, is kind of the deciding factor whether or not they're going to need to have a special meeting to continue remote or if the numbers have gone the direction, correct direction long enough, because we and now the trend is you're going down and um, are, are, are lower. I haven't seen today's numbers yet, but today's and tomorrow's, but they're in the right direction. And um, if they stay in the right direction, the Board of Health will then, well, Trevor, you're on the Board of Health, you can say what we're gonna do. Um, they would, you know, they would have us um, returning to uh, the hybrid model on Monday. So, you know, kind of yeah. waiting for those numbers out. That's one more day of numbers to look at. Yeah. Um, yeah. Things. That's, of course, barring anything tragically happening in the next few days regarding the numbers in which the Board of Health needs to step in. Yeah. 
you know, it seems like it seems to be moving in the right direction for sure. We're still, you know, seeing cases trickle in, but um, not at the rate we had after Thanksgiving for sure. So um, that's good. <clears throat> really good news. People are trying to get our kids back. I really can't thank them enough for that. The um, oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, did the town shut the Polish club down at all for the incident? Uh, yeah, they, yes, they they even they did on their own as well. Yeah, okay. yep, yeah. Um, the other COVID uh, news is that the antigen testing, um, our nurse um, has been trained at, at Deerfield Elementary and is ready to go. So we are ready to roll out the antigen testing. Um, should it be needed um, on Monday? So oh, that's great news. Yeah, <clears throat> very good news. So, <clears throat> so, any other questions? Hearing none, we'll move on to our first look at the FY22 budget proposal, which I assume Shelley will be speaking to. <clears throat> yes. So I shared out, um, the full budget to you all, as well as the narrative. And I think Darius, are you going to share your screen for me again, like we've been doing? Um, I'll kind of read through the narrative. I won't go line by line, but give you the gist of it. Um, the first caveat that I want to throw out there is that this is nearly our first draft. Nothing is set in stone. Um, we haven't done a whole lot of uh, creative thinking yet on how to proceed with our number because we do recognize that the increase is significantly higher than is feasible. Um, but the goal with doing this was for us to be able to see a true picture of what the needs are next year, um, particularly because of um, some COVID hardships is the primary reason for our increase. Uh, so we did look at existing staffing programs and services for a level service approach in building this. Uh, we considered COLA and STEP increases based on contract obligations and also included increases for non-union staff, which include central office, custodians, secretaries, etc. cetera. Uh, and then like last year, I looked at non-salary accounts to review and adjust based on actual data from the prior couple of years. So if an account has been way underspent, you know, I adjusted that, or if something has been overspent historically, we did have some changes there. Um, and then I built in some cost of living adjustment increases for particularly insurance and retirement related expenses, which on the Deerfield budget really only pertains to central office, the Deerfield portion of it, because the regular insurance for school employees is paid through the town, so that doesn't impact our, our local budget here. But um, central office could potentially have some increases, and Deerfield may have some increases there in their share. So then the final step was to look at all of our revolving accounts, school choice, school lunch, and early childhood, and then the special education revolving, just to make sure that the existing expenses that have historically been paid from those accounts in the past few years could continue to handle those expenses moving forward. Um, so as a result of that, Darius, if you can scroll down a little bit, we are looking at in this first draft an increase of 7.28%, uh, which is just over 350,000. Again, we recognize that is significantly higher than would be feasible. Um, but again, just wanted to get everything out there for us to start taking a look at. Um, but the primary factor is related to re revolving fund deficiencies, and that is primarily related to COVID-19 hardship. Uh, the first being in our early childhood program. These are things that we have been talking about for months and months and months. I think we started the difficult conversations in May when we really started to understand this more. Um, we made the decision this year to move early childhood wages off of the early childhood account and onto the local budget, which because of those savings that we've been working on with the positions, there was no um, nothing else for us to consider as far as using other funding sources for those. But moving to next year, um, it does represent an increase for us because we have no other savings yet at this point that we've discovered for next year considering that we have all existing staffing and programs in place. So we're looking at 95,000 as an addition in early childhood wages um, for the general fund. And then, oh, Trevor, do you have a question? In addition to the three, uh, um, 
That's in that's in, in the three hundred and fifty two thousand. Correct. Yep. And and if we were back, um, say miraculously, uh, just for my understanding, miraculously everybody got a vaccine and we we're all back to school and everybody's happy go lucky by next year. Um, we could start to see revenue again and maybe Correct. move that money back over. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Thank you. Um, so if we keep scrolling down, the, the story here continues. Same kind of theme again, um, financial hardship from COVID-19. So school lunch two meetings ago, you all agreed to pay the school lunch wages this year from general funds, again, with savings. Um, but moving forward, we will not be able to pay from the school lunch account as we would in a typical year. Um, I do expect that there will be, I'm hoping, uh, looking at my projections, that there could be around 20000 to roll over in the school lunch revolving account. So I didn't move all of the wages over, um, but I did project that we'll need to cover 31000 from the general fund. Uh, the third account revolving account that I looked at was the special education revolving. This one's a little bit different because it's not related to COVID. This is that a student is aging out of a program who is currently tuitioned in from another district. So there's no anticipated revenue. Um, we do pay two, I think it's two IAs out of that account right now. Um, there will be some rollover, so I didn't move all of the wages here. I just moved one IA, I believe, for twenty-five thousand um, to the general fund. And you know, I I had a long conversation with uh, Karen Ferrandino, our special education director, and unless Tina knows something, there's nothing on the horizon at this time for bringing in another student that would help cover um, those expenditures. So this is unfortunately something that we're going to have to navigate next year as well. Um, Shelly, and <clears throat> just a quick question on that, or Tina, um, with that student's departure, is there no um, reduction in staffing or services that need to be provided within the program? Or it's just a curiosity question. I'm assuming there isn't because uh, usually when they're tuitioned in, they're in a program that has a critical mass that's not really going to change the staffing needs to help lose only one of those people. So, but that there, was a that's a really good question, Ken. And there is a potential for one IA to be reduced um, from that program. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so the last piece sort of, again, is one of these things that happened this year, but it really is gonna have an impact next year. So we've had uh, out of district placement costs increase in fiscal year 21. Um, we had funds that we could cover the increase in costs. Um, we're looking at having an increase of 85,000 to 120,000 next year. Um, we This year we paid for it from special education and school choice, um, but because we don't have any revenue coming into special education that was paying a portion of that, 35000 will have to be absorbed into the general fund. Um, so all of these pieces that I've just discussed are included in the 7.28% already. And then I just wanted to point out a couple minor things. The two bullets here we've already talked about, the step and cola increases. Um, also took into consideration if anyone was taking longevity benefit option from contract this year and or column changes if, um, say, somebody was going from a master's to a master's plus 30. Um, and then some of the major quote unquote increases um, were for building maintenance and technology. And uh, those are things I think we, we should increase. We certainly could cut that back to save some money there, but based on our actual expenditures, we consistently go over in those line items mm -hmm. year to year. So I think it's a good idea to start to build that up a little bit, even though we are talking about a more challenging financial season for us. Mm -hmm. um, maintenance, I think is in part because of that, um, uh, the Siemens invoice for the energy management system, you know, that bill is about $7,000 and that gets eats up a huge chunk of our maintenance budget every year. So I'd really like to start adding in a little bit of money to at least cover that so that the maintenance money really can go to building repairs and needs. Mm -hmm. um, and then the technology network and software related items, some of it is overages from prior years. Some of it is also because we may be keeping some of the new technology related um, platforms that we're using this year, we might want to continue to use in the future. So I built in 
um, some buffer there. So I know it's a lot of information for you to take in. I'm happy to take questions. Just one question on that Siemens contract, and Ken, Ken may know this. That wasn't that like a 20 year thing, um, or is that in per, forever? <laughs> I thought that was like a, a project that I mean, this is going back, digging my memory from just years ago, but I, I could have swore that was you know a, a limited time program that we bought through Siemens and was going to go away after 20 years. Uh, I. I can only say that I'm not familiar with the specifics of the Siemens. Um, we had a, a management system in place early on in the school that uh, was a, a software package, but uh, I did not participate in the Siemens negotiations or the installation. So I, I can't right. answer that. Okay. Just, that. I'll try to dig around on that a little bit more. I thought that was close to being done. I know that I, don't, I didn't think we found the benefit, you know, it was part of a grant thing, I think, and you know, years ago. And mm -hmm. I can check in with Bill and see if he can find out any information as well. Yeah, just sure. sure. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any any other <laughs> questions out there? So um, I, just to, I, to realize the, the where we're at there. So you know, normally you don't bring. Normally we have a little bit more refined budget at this point in the year that mm -hmm. you know starts to tackle some of the numbers for how we're going to offset and adjust that. There's just a lot of unknowns going into next year, especially with those revolving funds. So, you know, um, I think right now we're going to have a longer spring than ever uh, in a sense when it comes to budget season. And that's a good thing. That's what we want. And so I'm happy to hear that town meetings are kind of being pushed off because we'll have a greater idea about what the program programming is going to look like come fall. We're going to have a greater understanding of what's the size of our preschools, What's the size of, you know, what do we have for enrollment? You know, are we going to, you know, can we take, how much risk can we take in the sense that those revolving funds will start to revolve again? Um, right. And in the same thing with, you know, lunches and that kind of stuff, um, getting a, a better sense of our numbers as the, you know, the spring rolls on, you know. <clears throat> so those are kind of things that, you know, we also have to, you know, you know plan out as well. Like we put some money up front out of school choice, knowing that we'll get some of that money back. Or, you know, how do we want to risk that and those kind of things, um, whether or not we have to do reductions. Um, we also, have to, you know, we have a lot of, you know, a lot of families doing a lot of different things during COVID um, from not just our edge to educational models, but, you know, school choice has been affected where people are, you know, deciding, are they going to come back? Those who decided to stay home, so to speak, for that. Those who are homeschooled, they, are they only doing it for one year? And we double the number of homeschool participants across our district. Um, you know, so are they going to come back? So there's a lot of kind of moving numbers on different things that hopefully we'll be able to, you know, I think as you know, you were talking positively about the vaccination, if in two months, you know, the majority of those who um, teachers are vaccinated and, you know, we're getting that rollout, I mean, we're going to have a better idea about how solid, what our risk level is going yeah. into next year also as we address it. And then we'll also get an idea what the state budget is going to do coming out and how that's going to affect the towns. So it's really hard. So you see that really high number. There's no way we're going forward with a 7% any new degree of that. Um, it's just kind of that's where we're starting. And then we're going to work it down. And you yeah. kind of see the lose. I think you all know that. But I'm saying it for those watching. Yeah. Okay. No, I as, as I looked at it, Shelly and Darius, I, I mean, it's 7.28. And uh, uh, <clears throat> two and a half to three percent, two and a half percent increase would be about one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. So, you know, there's a one hundred and thirty thousand plus differential there that perhaps we can, you know, absorb some of through school choice. But as you said, the picture is going to become a lot clearer over the coming months. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we'll be as quite a time, a tight a timeline developing the budget as we normally are in the spring because the town meeting is being pushed out and the Committees, even the state hasn't really come forward with any information to uh, to finalize things. So it will be a, it will be a process. But I appreciate all the information, Shelley and Tina, that you've pulled together so far. I, I think it gives the committee an idea of what what we've got to expect in terms of an overall increase uh, in terms of the actual budget, in terms of the percentage increase in the sources of funds we will rely on you folks to work out a proposal for us to consider. Thanks. I also wondered if there was any, um, 
any, you know, I thought I had heard that there was some help for schools in that, in the most recent COVID bill, you know, we have a change in Senate now, we have a change in administration that's coming. So there may be help down the road for us. We just don't know of yet. You're right. It is very early for all this, but um, I didn't know if anybody had heard anything to that effect in this most recent COVID relief bill that came through. I thought there was discussion of help for schools in that, but I could be. I know. It's I haven't still- heard of any new funding yet. Okay. I know there was nothing for the towns. I know that the cities and towns, but um, okay. We'll keep our eye on that. So. Well, yeah, thank you. And that's what's holding up the state as well. The state's not going to go through their budget process for next year until they figure out what the federal government's going to start doing and providing. So yep. I think yep. they're kind of waiting for the transition of powers to yeah. the smooth yeah. transition of power. Yes, nice smooth one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And any other questions for Shelly? Um, so no, thank okay. you. Thank you, everybody. I think we're good. Are we um, all right? We also, I'm sorry, we also, you know, um, we didn't go up at all last year. So, uh, right, that was a level funded budget. Um, I mean, we might have went up a little bit, but I think looking back at our budget that I had from last February, um, you know, we, so just looking at the numbers, it was a whole year we didn't do anything. So, um, that plays into it too. So. Charlie, and it, that's a very good point. I've, I've said it before. I forget what I say at committee meetings. I've reached that <laughs> point. Um, but there's the exact truth that when we do a level budget, it's not a level, you know what I mean? We still, right. we have increases that we have, the, the natural increases from salaries to yep. insurance or whatever. And we absorb that through savings we did last spring. So those, right. that cost is coming along with the additional ones. And so, right. yeah, you know, you're not going to be able to do level, level, level without reduction, reduction, reduction. So it's a good point. Yep. Thank you. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Very good. Um, we'll move on to new business, Yankee Candle donation. Thank you. Did everyone uh, receive, everyone received copies of the, the letters and correspondence? Um, and uh, we need to have a vote to recognize the gift and accept it. Is that correct, Darius? Is that what you're looking for for a vote? <laughs> Yes, I uh, again thank you know thank Yankee Candle. Um, unfortunately, we we missed the the our usual gathering. They usually invite us over and um, give us some some refreshment and and uh, you know just it's kind of a it's like a you know it's a nice is it for us? I mean, I've been doing it for thirteen years there. Um, it's always kind of a, it's kind of a sign that school's about to go on vacation. Is that why you remember it? Uh, <laughs> but uh, but you know um, they they do a nice job of um, you know giving those things out when we hear what they're what we you know they got an idea of what you're using the funds for. Um, I'm not sure if Tina's ready to go there yet, but um, she's starting the conversations, right, Tina? Okay. Um, but I, you know, I was kind of pushing like this is kind of, you know, it's not money you can count on. We shouldn't use it for budget. We should use it for something enhancing something that we're doing with the kids. Yes. Um, so, you know, Tina's got her fingers out to figure out what that what that's going to be. But you know, thank you so much to Yankee Candle for continuing to do this um, through their ups and downs. So yes, I'm looking for a vote to accept this the donation of four thousand dollars to um, Clearfield Elementary. Okay. Well, I would uh, entertain a, a motion to uh, thank Ranky Candle and accept the, the uh, gift, the generous donation that they have offered. I'll make that motion and thank thank you very much. Do we have a second? Second, Gary. Gary. Very good. We'll. Any other discussion? <clears throat> I think we should send it on a nice barbecue and we can all get back together again. <laughs> for the kids. For the kids. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, we'll do a roll call. Ken Cutterback, yes. David Sharp. I think he's nodding his head. Yes, yes. <laughs> Just looking for my clicker. Gary Angels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mary Raymond. Yes. Trevor. Yes. 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 It's a unanimous vote and thanks. Um, yes. Thank you so much. Should I maybe? Yeah. Let's let's talk about. Um, yeah. Let's talk about the Deerfield Academy one, Ken, if you would. Okay. 
Um, sure. Why don't you uh, fill in the specifics? And I don't know if everyone is aware that Deerfield Academy has stepped forward to assist the town of Deerfield and Frontier Regional with uh, issues in their school lunch programs. So, so they, they gave me a call right before the break. And so they wanted to do something about the um, the, or the financial gap that we were taking on regarding feeding the school the students of our community and they came forward and gave gave twenty five thousand dollars to split between frontier and deerfield um to help offset the losses that we're getting in our lunch in our meals program for feeding um you know feeding youth and so um i really want to thank you know um john austin over there at deerfield academy the president um and um you know for, for making this happen and so you know i think it was in the paper but we do have to eventually vote it it wasn't Timing wise of the agendas, it wasn't didn't fit right to put in the agenda in time. So it'll be on the next one to be appropriately. You probably could vote it now and nobody's gonna fight us over it, but <laughs> technically speaking, we gotta put it on the agenda for next time. We can talk right. about good news again next time. Well, we yeah. could uh, we could leave that vote for the next time, but maybe yeah. if I ask the committee to authorize me to pen a note to them from the yeah. dear school committee, yes. in addition to your uh, note that you always would send Darius and if the uh, committee's in agreement with that I would proceed to do that. Thank you Ken. That sounds great. Thank you Ken. Yeah and, and not only is it feeding the children you know they uh, you know we've been feeding the seniors uh, breakfast as well so I mean that's been mm -hmm. the seniors have loved that this whole time. Um, i very grateful for that so it's wonderful to have the help. Yeah. Well. Okay. Moving right along, um, we're down to reports. The chair has no report to issue at this point in time. I think everyone received a copy from the collaborative of their annual report um, over the last couple of weeks, or maybe it just came to me. If it did, I, I should forward it along, but um, anything else to add, Carrie? No. Okay. Last few weeks. Principal's report. It's really short. I feel like we've just met not too long ago, so we don't have a whole lot to share. But we have shifted our um, internal structure for a phase three model, and our remote classrooms are up and rolling. And so we're ready to return to four days in person whenever that happens. Um, and then, really, we would like to recognize our community once again for their partnership with us and DES families. And a big shout out to Colleen Smith, our school counselor, for soliciting, collecting, and distributing donations from local businesses, our faculty and staff, and community organizations. In less than a month, an estimated $3,000 in cash, meals, and gift donations were gathered to give out to 16 DES families for this winter season. And that's over 35 children who benefited from this outpouring of support. And I'd also like to give a shout out to Cheswick's Market for um, making a lot of this happen as well. So, awesome. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Feels so good to hear. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. And superintendent. Yep, I got a few things to report. Um, the first one is I want to welcome aboard Jeff Jeffrey McDonald as our new food service director. Um, <clears throat> Jeffrey comes from us from UMass Amherst Food Service, and he began he began work right before the holidays. He had some um, there were carryover time with Mary, so he was able to learn some of the ropes through her. But we wish Mary Deleuze and her family the best. They have now they've gone, and um, obviously we wish her the best. And I am, when we get an opportunity, I'll get Jeff over to a meeting. But this was kind of his first week on his own. I wasn't going to make him come out every night to all these meetings. So. Um, <clears throat> I want to mention to this this committee um, because it's one of one of your very own. But um, I'm honored to announce that um, Isabel Brown, a senior at Deer from Deerfield, is the 2021 uh, Superintendent's Board recipient. Um, and so she was recognized last night at the Frontier Regional School Committee, but uh, Isabel is an outstanding student, musician, theater performer, as well as an athlete, and she is an active participant in our community, and um, she's a wonderful friend to just about everybody who knows her and probably is, 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 is an exemplary example of Frontier's finest. So it's just being one of ours who's right down the street here from um, our school. So um, congratulations to her. Um, Deerfield Academy, I just mentioned, and John Austin, and who's the head of school, not the president. I think I called him the president, which is probably a different role. Um, another update, real quick, also is MCAS. Um, I did receive uh, information from 
Jesse yesterday that they are gonna roll out grades three through eight, um, a reduced testing time MCAS, but they're gonna do kind of a session sampling approach where the students will take only a portion of the MCAS assessment in each subject, but they do want to preserve the validity and reliability of the test um, for, the, for, the, for the schools. And so you're gonna hear a little bit about this. I've, I've been hearing some stirrings from different groups that want testing to stop. Um, and, but right now they are wanting to do some, some, some testing to get an idea of what, what our change in testing, our teaching mode is created in using that, you know, data. And I, I kind of agree with that. I'd like to see some data coming out of this to see where we are and also to help us plan for next year. Right. Um, they are not going to hold us accountable. There's going to be no accountability on the test to the yeah. district um, and such. And then the competency determination, that's a test you have to take in order to pass, in order to graduate. They've also done, it can be done through coursework at the high schools and such. So it's not a, a it's not a gotcha test, but more of an, a kind of where things are at. So that's kind of hot off the press that came yesterday. Um, yeah, so we'll see what the, the, the testing window looks like. That'll be later in the spring. Um, and I think the, the biggest downside is, is if everything goes as we hope, we'd have a lot of kids in person and we'd have to be doing testing when we finally got them back in the building. That's the downside of it. Um, but it, hopefully it's reduced to a point where it's reasonable um, as well there. And then <clears throat> the last thing, that's it. That's all I got for you. I do feel like it makes sense to to do to get a uh, snapshot of where we're at after this, mm -hmm. but you know, I know people have strong feelings either way on it, but it does feel like after all this, we should figure out where we're at. Yeah, I mean, MCAS is not an end all be all of any level. It's one marker and one indicator, but it's an indicator that we have over years have seen where we are, and um, even as students, you know, students and seeing progression of students and. Um, we can use that as an indicator to make sure that we get needs in certain places. So that's how yep. I look at it. But yep. I'm sure we'll maybe hear other people have different opinions of it. But right now, that's a that's what we're seeing happening. Okay. Very good. Um, I assume no executive session this evening. So, anyone have anything else that they would like to bring forth? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll motion to adjourn. I'll second. Thank you, Gary. Gary second. Ken Cutterback, yes. Uh, David Sharp? Yes. Uh, Carrie Etchells? Yes. Mary Raymond? Yes. And Trevor McDaniel? Yes. Thank you all. Oh, thank you all very much. Happy New Year to everyone. Um, Everyone stay safe and uh, have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye.